Well, the whole regular season has been leading up to this. The regular season finale at Darlington Raceway. The Southern 500. It was an epic, exciting race with an even more epic finish. Let's discuss the Southern 500 and the playoff field. Hello everyone, my name is Kyle aka Racing Boy Short and this is my channel where I talk NASCAR, NASCAR news and everything NASCAR. Final race of the regular season and it was dramatic, a drama filled race. We had a pretty close regular season championship battle heading in and an even more entertaining bubble battle between multiple drivers to see who will make the playoffs. One of those bubble drivers was very strong all weekend long, and that was Bubba Wallace, very fast in practice. Ended up putting it on the pole at Darlington Raceway. A good time to get his first pole of the season and looked to be one of the fastest cars earlier on in the event. It looked like him, Kyle Larson, Denny Hamlin, maybe even Tyler Reddick might have been the fastest cars. Speaking of Tyler Reddick, one thing that was talked about a lot during the race was Tyler Reddick was very sick heading into this race. Apparently, while he was in the car, he was having almost having bowel movements. He was throwing up. It was it was not a good time at all for Tyler Reddick tonight at Darlington Raceway for the Southern 500. Ended up still getting a very good finish. And ended up winning the regular season championship by only a single point over Kyle Larson. And Kyle Larson did everything he could to win that regular season championship tonight. He might have had the best car, might have been the fastest throughout the night, had a lot of speed, led, I think he led the most laps at the end of the evening, was very dominant, but ended up being a little bit off when it came to strategy. The strategy was kind of all over the place during this event with the ill-timed cautions and whatnot. Well, that bubble battle was heating up throughout the day. The first big hit to the bubble battle was actually Martin Truex Jr., who actually wrecked out on lap number two of the event, along with Ryan Blaney getting sideways, going into one and two underneath. William Byron overcorrects it, puts himself and Ryan Blaney into the outside wall, ending both of their days. And at this point, there was a slight question if Truex would make the playoffs. It seemed like he was a lock going in, but now all of a sudden it was at question. But with the way the stages and the stage points ended up landing during the during the race, before we even got to the end of the race, Martin Truex Jr. locked up his playoff spot, which is well-deserved. I would have been pretty disappointed to not see Martin Truex Jr. in the playoffs in his final season, even though, especially since he's done as well as he has this year, he hasn't gotten that victory but he's been in position many times this year and he will get an opportunity to fight for a championship but the question was who was going to get the other spots there was two spots left up for grabs it looked like Ty Gibbs had a decent handle on one of them and the other one was pretty much up for grabs between Busher, Bubba, and Chastain Busher, I think had a decent grasp on it except for when Bubba Wallace was up leading the race because if you win you get in we saw that last week with Harrison Burton and we knew we knew that was a potential this week as well and Bubba Wallace seemed like a, a big time threat for the victory throughout the race by the end of the event it seemed like he didn't have a race winning car but maybe a top five car at best but unfortunately got caught up got caught up in a pretty gnarly accident right here. I'm going to show you right here. It turns one and two. Ty Gibbs. Ty Gibbs was also involved in this incident. A very close call for Chris Busher, who almost got involved in this incident. A lot of drama here at the end of this event. This incident coming with a little bit over 20 laps to go. And there was a couple strategies already in place. 
But this caution right here ended up creating one more crucial strategy that set up an epic finish. One driver that was pretty strong throughout the day was running top five and near the end of the race seemed like they had potentially winning speed was Chase Briscoe. Chase Briscoe has had some decent runs this year. I wouldn't say he's been a, a race winner, a race, a race winning car week in and week out, but he's had moments throughout the year and he's overall been a top 15, top 20 guy throughout the year. And of course, he's moving on to Joe Gibbs Racing next season. And he had a great race tonight at Darlington, plus the 14 car. They're, they're, that team just had a, a very good strategy as well in the event. All of these different circumstances added up, what ended up putting Chase Briscoe at the front of the field with around 20 laps to go with a great opportunity to win the race. He went out there and took the race lead and he did everything right here at the end of this race. But, but, like I said, this caution here set up a very crucial strategy and that was Kyle Busch and a couple of other drivers deciding to take four fresh Goodyears with around 20 laps remaining. Kyle Busch would get on these four Goodyears and that first lap of green flag racing, he was flying, I think he passed four or five cars just on the first lap and was passing these cars very easily. But by the time he got somewhat close to Chase Briscoe's bumper, around a half second from Chase Briscoe, I think the tires really began to even out and Briscoe got off. Briscoe had a great restart, got out to a decent lead. It was very difficult for Kyle Busch to cut down the lead, but he was cutting it down a little bit at a time, and he just ran out of time. Chase Briscoe was able to hold off Kyle Busch, Rowdy Busch, to get his second career victory, his first win on the season, and he's also able to lock up the 16th and final playoff spot. So two straight weeks with new winners and two straight weeks where my driver, Kyle Busch, finishes second. Uh, this is, yeah, it's disappointing. We'll, we'll start with the Kyle Busch stuff first. We'll get that out of the way. Very, very disappointing. I, I really thought Kyle Busch was going to catch him when he made those first couple of passes, especially the pass on Larson. I'm like, he's going to get past Chase Briscoe so easily, but Chase Briscoe had such a great restart, clean air, uh, as every track makes a huge difference, and Kyle Busch just was, just was unable to get close enough to really make a move on Briscoe to get that first win of the year and lock up a playoff spot. Yeah, it, was, it was depressing, heartbreaking as a Kyle Busch fan to watch. That's two straight weeks. Two straight second place finishes. So close both times. And 10 more races to go. Hopefully Kyle Busch can get a win before the year's up. But that, that, was, that was a tough watch. So Chase Briscoe locks up a playoff spot. Ty Gibbs gets the other playoff spot by just a couple of points over Chris Buescher. And Bubba Wallace and Ross Chastain also miss out on the playoffs. I feel for, for Busher and Bubba, especially Ross too. I think Ross had a decent year. But Busher came so close to winning so many races. And I think for Bubba, maybe two-thirds of this regular season, he has not had the strongest car. But the last month and a half, other than maybe his teammate, Tyler Reddick, I think he's been the best driver in the Cup Series on a consistent basis. And it is unfortunate to see for, for both of those drivers, especially. But Chase Briscoe gets himself into the playoffs for the second time in his career after his second career victory, and it comes in the Southern 500. All right, I mentioned how Chase Briscoe and Ty Gibbs are in the playoffs, but who else is in the playoffs? What does the playoff seating look like? Take a look at this. I'm going to pull it up on your screen. The playoff seating. First in points, you have Kyle Larson, 35 points above the cut line. 
It's going to be really difficult to knock him out. You have Christopher Bell, 27 points up. Tyler Raddick, your regular season champion, 23 points above the cut line. You have William Byron, 17 points above the cut line. You have Ryan Blaney, 13 points above the cut line. Then you have Denny Hamlin, and this is hard to see. Only 10 points above the cut line in sixth place. That penalty really hurt Denny Hamlin. You have Chase Elliott, only nine points above the cut line in seventh. You have Brad. This is where it gets really close. Brad Kozlowski, eighth in points, only three points above the cut line. You have his former teammate, Joey Logano, in ninth, only two points above the cut line. Tied with Logano is his teammate, Austin Sindrick, two points above the cut line. Then you have Daniel Suarez, one point above the cut line. And then you have a three-way tie for 12th, the final spot being Alex Bowman, Chase Briscoe, and Harrison Burton. And then tied for 15th, you have Joe Gibbs Racing teammates, Ty Gibbs, and Martin Truex Jr., a.k.a. the only two drivers to make it to the playoffs on points. So a very interesting playoff field that we have heading in to Atlanta Motor Speedway. Later on in the week, I will have my playoff picks out on who I think is going to be the champion and who do I think is going to advance out of each and every round. But give me your thoughts down below about the Southern 500, about the playoff field that we have. What were your thoughts about the end of that race? Are you as heartbroken as I am about Kyle Busch? Probably not. Probably not, but that's fine. I'm heartbroken about it, but it's all good. And who's maybe your pick to be the Cup Series champion? And let's go enjoy Atlanta next week. I have some content coming out this next week. Also, if you haven't already, I would appreciate you subscribing to the channel. I do multiple NASCAR videos throughout the week, but that'll do it for me. Thanks for watching. My name is Kyle, a.k.a. Racing Boy Short, saying peace.